Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 12th of August. One soldier killed terrorist gunned down in encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Abdullah meets members of Grand Assembly as Afghan peace talks expected soon. And India celebrates Hindu Lord Krishna's birth with joy and reverence. And now for all the details. India has again recorded 60,000 coronavirus cases in 24 hours, taking its tally way past the 2.3 million mark and its death toll has risen to 46,188, very close to the UK's toll. India's health ministry, however, on Tuesday said the country's COVID-19 mortality rate dropped below 2% for the first time since the first lockdown. Meanwhile, a panel of experts met on Wednesday to discuss procurement and administration of COVID-19 vaccines. With India reporting 60,963 coronavirus cases and 834 deaths in the last 24 hours, the total number of COVID-19 infections on Wednesday rose to 2,329,639, including fatalities, active cases and recoveries. India has the third highest cases in the world after the US and Brazil. Meanwhile, an expert committee chaired by Niti Aayog member Dr. V.K. Paul met on Wednesday to consider logistics and ethical aspects of procuring and administering the COVID-19 vaccine. The committee will engage with vaccine manufacturers and different state governments to understand the issues around the vaccine distribution. Even as the country currently ranks fifth in the total number of deaths due to COVID-19, India's health ministry earlier on Tuesday reiterated the deaths as a proportion of known infected cases has been falling consistently. India's mortality rate has fallen to 1.99% from 2.7% last month. Speaking to chief ministers of 10 states which are currently the worst affected by the pandemic, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday said, containment, contact tracing and surveillance are the most effective weapons in the battle against COVID-19. At least three people were killed in clashes with police in India's southern Bengaluru city overnight after a Facebook post offensive to Muslims sparked protest in which a police station was attacked and a politician's house and vehicles were torched. Unable to quell protesters using batons and tear gas, police opened fire as they risked being overpowered during the violent unrest, an official said. The Facebook post shared by nephew of Congress politician whose house was attacked and burnt in the violence has since been deleted. Police said an emergency law prohibiting gatherings had been imposed in Bengaluru and the person responsible for the offensive post had been arrested. Around 145 people have also been arrested in connection with the violence. An encounter broke out between terrorists and security forces in the early hours of Wednesday in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. One militant and a soldier were killed while another soldier suffered injuries during the encounter. Sepoy Jilajit Yadav is undergoing treatment at a hospital after he received a bullet injury on his chest. This incident came three days ahead of Independence Day in Kamrasipura village of Pulwama district. Security forces launched a search operation on receiving information about the presence of the militants there. They recovered a cache of arms from the encounter site. Moving on, locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have blamed acute negligence compounded with systematic designs to not let the illegally occupied region develop, has not only deprived it of major touristic footfall, but have pushed it into a state of delipidation. Our report. Clad with hills and valleys, the scintillating scenery of Pakistan-administered Kashmir has the potential to become one of the prominent tourist hotspots. However, 
locals in the illegally occupied region say that some places that held historic and cultural significance have been deliberately damaged or completely destroyed at the instructions of the authorities. A historical waterfall near Chinari area could have become a source of historical reference and revenue generation, but all construction around it has been raised down. और गर्मियों का मौसम पूरे पाकिस्तान से लोग जो है ना वो टूरिस्ट यहाँ आते हैं और यहाँ एंजॉय करते हैं आजाद कश्मीर कुमार का ये एक कुदरती बड़ा असर था इसके साथ ये शारा है सिरीनगर पर कदीम जमाने का एक पुल जो पत्थर और लोहे के घाटर से बनाया गया था वो लगा था जो एक इंटाई तारीख की अमीर का अमल पुल था तो उस पुल को जो है ना वो तोड़ दिया गया है। Locals blame acute negligence compounded with systematic designs to not let the region develop has not only deprived region of any major touristic footfall but have pushed it into a state of dilapidation. There have been numerous instances when the authorities in the region have been found guilty of destroying the sources of income of people or depriving them a benefit on Islamabad's instructions. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's government schools reopened for all grades this week, nearly five months after they were first closed due to the risk of coronavirus spreading in the country. Authorities decided to reopen the schools as no community transmission of the virus has been detected in recent weeks in the island nation. All state-owned schools across Sri Lanka reopened this week after being closed for over a month amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the Education Ministry said. Schools reopened for all grades under strict health guidelines, which included students wearing face masks and washing hands regularly. Desks in classrooms were also spaced one meter apart and students were prohibited from playing in playgrounds or partaking in sporting activities. The Education Ministry said that schools that have over 200 students would operate classes on separate days in order to maintain a strict social distancing policy. All schools in the island nation were shut in mid-March when Sri Lanka detected its first local COVID-19 infection. Schools were later reopened for selected grades in July but were closed again following the threat of a fresh outbreak of the virus. According to the Education Ministry, the authorities have decided to reopen the schools because no community transmission of the virus has been detected in recent weeks. As of Wednesday morning, 2,880 coronavirus cases were detected in Sri Lanka, out of which 11 people have died and 2,622 have recovered and been discharged from the hospital. In news from Afghanistan, Chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah, on Tuesday held meetings with top political leaders and the members of traditional Grand Assembly, Loya Jirga, to discuss next steps for Afghan peace process. Reports suggest the government's peace negotiating team will meet Taliban leaders in Doha this week to discuss and to the war in the country. Chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah, on Tuesday held meetings with former President Hamid Karzai and members of the Constitutional Loya Jirga, a traditional Grand Assembly, and discussed the roadmap to peace, as talks with Taliban are expected soon. Abdullah said on Twitter that they exchanged views on the unique opportunity for all sides to advance and implement the Jirga views for the sake of peace and focused on the next steps dealing with concluding the prisoner release and intra-Afghan talks issues. The Loya Jirga in a resolution issued on Sunday had approved the release of the last 400 or 5,000 Taliban prisoners, which has been Taliban's condition for joining the peace talks. The Afghan government had been hesitant as these prisoners were involved in some of the worst violence in the country. According to local media reports, the Afghan government's peace negotiating team is now expected to depart for Doha on Thursday to sit with the Taliban's negotiating team to discuss bringing peace to the country. 
Nepal has given local administrations and provincial governments the authority to decide on restrictions and lockdown measures as COVID-19 cases continue to rise across the country. According to officials, the districts with more than 200 active cases of coronavirus can impose necessary restrictions. This comes weeks after federal government had lifted the nationwide lockdown to curb the spread. Nepal's coronavirus tally near 24,000 mark on Wednesday with at least 83 deaths. The rise in infection cases comes as the government had lifted the coronavirus lockdown to curb the spread three weeks ago. Nepal government has given provincial administration and governments the authority to decide on restrictions and lockdown measures as COVID-19 cases continue to rise. According to officials, the districts with more than 200 active cases of coronavirus can impose necessary restrictions. Other containment measures in Nepal include restrictions on domestic and international passenger flights until August 31. As part of government's previous orders, religious places including famous Pashupatinath temple also remain closed for public, which usually attracted thousands of devotees from worldwide, contributing to Nepal's tourism industry. The iconic temple is closed even during holy month of Shravan when devotees offer special prayers to Lord Shiva. Moving on, people in parts of India on Wednesday continued celebrations of Janmashtami, the birth anniversary of Hindu Lord Krishna with much devotion while also taking precautions amid the spike in COVID-19 cases. The annual festival, which began on Tuesday this year, is usually celebrated by keeping fast visiting temples and organizing human pyramid competitions. Devotees in parts of India continued celebrations of Janmashtami, the birth anniversary of Lord Krishna, with much devotion and enthusiasm on Wednesday, while also taking precautions amid the spike in COVID-19 cases. In capital New Delhi, people thronged famous Iskon temple to seek blessings from Lord Krishna and his eternal concert Radha on the special occasion, but the festivities were subdued by the pandemic. बार की जन्माष्टमी थोड़ी सी फीकी है पहले के जैसे जैसे अब हम मंदिर में आए हैं तो हम प्रसाद नहीं दे सकते चढ़ा नहीं सकते और जैसा आपको पता है रात में यहां पर बहुत ज्यादा सेलिब्रेट किया जाता था मंदिरों के अंदर बहुत सारे मंदिर जा सकते थे मगर अब ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है मीनवाल इन नदन मथुरा सिटी द बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा प्रीस परफॉर्मड प्रेयर्स एंड ऑफर्ड मिल्क टू द गॉड्स आइडल ऑन द ओकेजन हिंदू सेलिब्रेट जन्माष्टमी एवरी ईयर बाय कीपिंग फास्ट visiting temples and organizing the Hihandi or human pyramid competitions. But there were no human pyramid competitions this year in western Mumbai city which normally attracts thousands onto the streets due to a surge in coronavirus in India. Folklore says Lord Krishna formed pyramids with friends to break pots of butter or curd hung from ceilings. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. One soldier killed terrorist gun down in an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Abdullah meets members of Grand Assembly as of God peace talks expected soon. Lord Krishna's birth with joy and reverence. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.